Hi, wonderful YouTube family. Lisa A. Romana here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and a YouTuber has written in and asked me to do a video um, to help her with her obsession about worrying about what other people think about her. It seems that she can't stop worrying about what other people think about her. So um, in her letter, she described going to the grocery store and having to spend an hour before she goes out of the house doing her makeup on before she goes to the grocery store. And then she talked about how, you know, before she went to pick up her kids at soccer, she had to make sure that her hair was perfect. And she talked about how, and I'm, I'm, I'm making a funny face because I used to live this way. Um, now I take care of myself because I want to click, click, click. I can go out without makeup, with makeup, whatever. But I used to be really very much controlled by worrying about what other people think about us. Now our experiences from childhood will determine what we worry about. So if a child grows up in a home where grades, 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 and performance was what they were programmed and brainwashed to worry about, then when they're going, when a child is going about through their day, that child will be worried about their performance. So if the child plays tennis, if the child dances, that will be how an obsessive thought about what other people think shows up in them. If you came from a home where looks were very important, and in my home, my father always commented about the way we looked and commented about the way my mom looked and commented about what other people looked like. So that was part of my download. So what did I worry about? I worried about what other people thought about the way that I looked. Hence, I become a teenager with all these issues with food and exercise and everything else. And it just kept going and going and going and going. It didn't stop until I woke up. So depending on what type of home you grew up in, that will determine what you generally, what you probably worry about today. So if people worried about money in your home, then you worry about money. If your parents were worried about what other people thought about the way your house looked, then you tend to worry about what other people think about your house. If your parents worried about weight, how heavy people were, how skinny they were, whatever, then you are someone who probably has those downloads in your subconscious mind. So you're reacting to the downloads that are in the subconscious mind today. So how, how can we learn to stop worrying about or obsessing about what other people think? I love education. I love expansion. I love picking things apart and looking at them from all different angles. And like I said, gaining a different perspective. So this all goes back to the child's experience. And there is more and more data, and I think I have, I may even have it right here. But there is more and more data proving that what happens to us in our childhood is determines what kinds of adult experiences we have. And that what happens to us in childhood is more indicative of our adult relationships than what happens to us in later on in life. So more and more science is proving that um, our experiences in childhood are basically giving us the foundation for what kind of life experiences we're going to have for adults. Great article from the internationally um, Traumatized Children, How Childhood Trauma Influences Brain Development by Dr. Bruce Perry, MD, PhD, from um, the www.childtrauma.org. So you guys check that article out, and it will actually back up what I'm saying. So I think we worry about what other people think if we're that type of a person because we're still wounded adult children. So we're not self-actualized, we're not self-realized, we don't have a jumping off place yet, we don't have self-esteem, but like I always say, it is not possible to have self-esteem if you don't have a self. And you really can't have a self if your whole life you've been taught that you don't have a right to connect to your feelings and you don't know how to process your feelings. So that has to be addressed. So in terms of learning how to stop obsessing about what other people think about you, we have to work on helping you become more self-actualized and more self-realized, which means that we have to change your perception, dear one. Now, when you are the wounded adult child, you are actually still a three or four year old, in my opinion, or maybe you're six or seven. But when you think about babies, Babies, really, babies, their their perception is very, very, very limited. So when they're sitting in their playpen, what's happening in their field of vision is their world. That's it. Mom, dad, 
brother, sister, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, neighbors that come in and out. That's it. That's that child's world. The child has no understanding outside that perception of the world. And from the child's perception, everyone's looking at me. And from the child's perception, I have to really worry about what these people think about me because I need them for my survival. If they ignore me, I'll die. So when we're wounded in childhood and we haven't healed these wounds, that perception pretty much stays the same. Even though there are a million people in, you know, that you could be sitting in, in an area that has, in your media experience, a million people. If you're a wounded child, adult child, who's been traumatized and hasn't really moved past a certain level of emotional development, you will still very much feel like that three-year-old child in the playpen worrying about what other people think about you because you've suffered from attachment trauma or narcissistic abuse because you haven't been permitted to develop a sense of self because the self that you were trying to create has been shamed and now the pain versus pleasure principle is 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 a part of this dynamic and now there's pain associated with feeling our feelings and blah 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 <laughs> and that's why I created my my coaching program that so many of you are you know are enjoying right now which I'm so happy about um, because I give you the practical steps to enlightenment we need practical tools to enlightenment we need practical how do I do that how do I feel my feelings how do I stop caring what other people think about me we need practical tools right so dear one for you specifically, for anyone out there who's suffering with worrying about what other people think about you, you have to understand that, you know, I use this term today in a coaching session, that um, the world is like a house of mirrors because everybody is projecting their inner reality of themselves out into the world. So when you're talking to someone, you're real, you have to understand that that person is speaking to their projection of you. So it can be altered. It's not a true reality of you. Only you can know the true reality, the true nature of you. And that comes with, with spiritual practices and enlightenment and learning and mind development and all kind of parlays together. But it really does help you to shift your perception. So when you, when you think about yourself out and about in a crowd, and if you find yourself hearing yourself say, you know, they're judging my shoes or, oh, my God, my, my pedicure got ch my pedicure is chipped and they can all see it. You know, they're all, you know, let me hide my toes under the table so no one can look at my pedicure. Do you want, chances are no one gives a crap about your pedicure because they're all worried about their own stuff. They're all dealing with their own projections. They're worried about what you think about them. Ever think about that? Ever think about the fact that most people who carry this wound are worried about what you think about them, and we're walking around worrying about what they think about us, something to consider. So know that if you're obsessing about what other people think about you, you've been, you've been judged. That's the, that's the sign that you've been judged as a child. You've been judged throughout your life. You know, you've been taught that you should worry about what other people think about you. And so what you can begin doing is every day, practical things is, Get out a journal. I have mine, mine on my desk. You know, and every morning I wake up and I write my intentions for the, for the day. So today I will focus on myself. Today I will br bring my awareness into my own body. Today I will not judge anyone in my outer experience. And the minute I judge someone, I'm going to ask for forgiveness of the self and, and say I'm sorry to this person in my own mind and then let it go. When I hear myself judge myself, I will let it go. And I would also... I would begin seeking my own approval. What are five things that I can do today that I can do just for me? And I'm not going to seek anybody's validation about it. Do I want to have a massage? Do I want to go for a walk? Do I want to call an old friend? Do I write, want to write out a thank you card? You know, do I want to eat in a specific restaurant? What are five different things that you can do completely for yourself just for today? that you will not share with anyone. They're just for the divine self. Now, the reason this exercise is so effective is because it brings the attention away from other people and brings your awareness and your attention into the divine self. 
Now, the connection to self is something that you have to work on because your connections to the idea of self are very small and minimal. They might just be in the construction phase. We want the connection to self to be really, really strong. So as you move forward and you think about these ideas and ask yourself, am I living my life through the, my child's perspective? Am I seeing my life like I'm stuck in that playpen at three years old, like thinking everybody's you know, looking at me and talking about me? Am I existing as if I need these people? Because you don't. You don't need anyone outside of you to survive. Absolutely not. That's an illusion. But the idea is we have to heal the wound that created this illusion. That's the way to move forward in a, in a concrete way that lasts forever. I can tell you don't care about what other people think, but the chances of that sticking are slim to none. But I can teach you why you shouldn't care about what other people think, and I can teach you why you do care about what other people think, and then I can give the keys over to hand the keys over can't he hand the keys over to you and say, okay, dear one, what are you going to do with that information? You know, remind yourself you're not three years old in a playpen anymore. You don't need any of these people. What they what they think about you really isn't insignificant. It really isn't important. None of these people are going to be at your kitchen table tonight for dinner. Should you really care about what they think? And if they criticize you, it's just it's because they've been criticized. Remember, the house is a, the the world is a is a house of mirrors. And we have to be careful that we're not getting caught up in other people's projections. You know, everybody else, everybody that you see is going to have a, a projection or a perception of you that's based on their inner dialogue and their history. And so when you think about that, when you think that you could talk to 100 people in a day and 100 people can have a different opinion of you because of their internal experiences and their perceptions and their projections because people who are unconscious project and if they have a wounded past they project that that onto the world people who are conscious who are healed project love and happiness and peace and contentment and they're very very present and there's no need to judge you and they actually want to know who you are and they actually accept who you are and that's really what I think we all need to be striving towards so I hope this has helped you, dear one. So thank you so much for your, your letter. I really, really appreciate it. Namaste. <laughs>